Not long ago, I released a video, and in that video, I talked about how Code Interpreter is changing the game for ChatGPT, but I said this. I haven't done a video on Code Interpreter because it's not as relevant for authors, and well, that didn't age well. So in this video, I'm actually going to be eating my words there and talking a little bit about how ChatGPT's new Code Interpreter feature can actually be used very effectively by authors and what it means uh, for the implications of the future. Let's get into it. Now, before we dive into this too much, I do have to give credit where credit is due. I learned about some of the techniques that we're gonna discuss here from Elizabeth Ann West through the Future Fiction Academy. Now, the Future Fiction Academy, if you're not familiar, it's basically right now, uh, until my course comes out, you yeah, know, eh, eh, um, Right now, it is the, I believe, the best way to be learning about using fiction for AI uh, because they are constantly doing lab hours and really digging into the details of how to use AI to write fiction. And they do a really good job. It is a little expensive. It's a monthly expense. Uh, but I will have a link down below if you want to check it out because I learned th these valuable lessons from that. And uh, there are a lot of other things that I have included in other videos on this channel that I initially got the idea from in those sessions so definitely go check her out uh, but in the meantime let's dive into to code interpreter all right so we're here in chat gpt and in order to make sure you have code interpreter enabled you first of all need to be a subscriber to chat gpt plus so you can get access to gpt4 and then you go over here to these three dots and go to settings and beta go to beta features and make sure that this thing right here code interpreter is selected once that's selected, you'll be able to come up here and see under GPT-4, you'll see this option for code interpreter. We want to select that. And now you should know that you have access to this by seeing this little plus sign here in the corner uh, or in the sidebar here. So what can we actually do with code interpreter? Well, first of all, um, basically the best way to think about it for authors is that it is a way to upload documents and to have it do certain things with that, those documents. Now, Code Interpreter, I recommend you go check out a bunch of other videos on YouTube because there are so many different things that you can use it for. But for writers specifically, the most applicable use case is in uploading documents and having it do things with those documents. And there's a lot that it can do. So I'm going to actually deselect it for a second to do this first bit, and I'm going to say, we're going to give it this prompt right here, which says, give me a world building sheet for a science fiction novel series that takes place on a colony spaceship heading for distant parts of the galaxy. Include specific details about the ship, including what the people do on the ship for recreation, daily activities, work, etc. Um, and so this is just a, a quick prompt I threw together on a world building sh sheet. This is not a tutorial on world building sheets, okay? That's something I think we could do in the future, putting together the frameworks for a good world building uh, situation. But for now, this is just what I'm putting together for now to get something quick from ChatGPT. All right, so it gave us a pretty detailed world building sheet here. We have the setting, the series takes place on the Starbound, an enormous generational colony ship. As of the start of the series, the ship has been in transit for over 200 years, okay. Starbound ship specifications, it's 60 kilometers long, 20 kilometers at the widest part. 5,000 decks, each ranging from 3 to 12 meters in height, depending on use. This is actually kind of cool. I, um, I rather like the information it's given us here. So then it goes into a bunch of daily life things. The majority of people live in small apartments. Um, many of the residents work in the maintenance of the ship and its life support sy systems. Mandatory schooling up to age 18 and so forth. So pretty decent world building sheet to start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we're gonna put this in a text file, a .txt file. The simplest way to do this is to just pull up Notepad if you're using uh, Windows or, some, or whatever the equivalent is on Mac and then you can just copy and paste it. Now with Notepad, uh, anytime you're saving a TXT file, it's going to remove all your formatting and things like this so you don't have the bold and the, the bullet points and things like that. 
Uh, but that's okay. But if you do want to save that stuff somewhere else, I would recommend maybe saving it to a Google Doc. And then from a Google Doc, you can export to a TXT file. But I'm just going to stick with the simplest solution here, which is to put it in this TXT file. And so I'm going to save this as... We're going to save it just as world building sheet. And so now we have this world building sheet. Okay. So now if we open up a new chat, we go and now select code, code interpreter. We can now upload this TXT file. So it now has that. And then we can ask it anything we want to, and it will understand because it has been using this TXT file. So we can just say something to the effect of, give me 12 slice of life episodes that I could write as short stories set within this colony spaceship. So it says, first, let's examine the uploaded file to understand the unique aspects of your space colony ship. And then it actually, this is what's so amazing about Code Interpreter. It actually writes the code it needs to use on the spot to um, basically access. And obviously it didn't require a whole lot of code here, but there's a lot of things that it can extract and do in Code Interpreter because it writes its own code and then uses that code to do what you asked it to do. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. And so it says, thank you for the detailed world building sheet. This really helps to visualize the settings and so forth. And then now we get the 12 slice of life episode ideas based on the provided details. The night shift, follow the work of maintenance crews as they navigate the ship during the quiet hours, dealing with everything from routine repairs to unexpected malfunctions. Under the dome, a day in the life of a family living near one of the biodomes, exploring their daily routines, interacting with the local flora and fauna. So it's given me all 12 of these things and all I had to do was upload the world building sheet and then ask it questions. So this is a really good idea if you have like a lot of saved information that you just want to access multiple times you can do that. Now, what if we wanted to push this a little further and take it to the next level? Let's assume that we have a couple of world building sheets and then, or, or a couple of different documents, and then we want it to do different things with all of them. Let's see what we can actually do. All right, so I've created two more documents here. This first, first one on the right here is a basically a copy word for word of a, a, a blog post that I did on the 24 chapter novel outline with details about what that is and how to do it. Um, so I copied literally the entire thing. Um, it's quite a, a number of words and just put it in here. You can, by the way, find this blog post at nerdynovelist.com. And then over here, I created a document called writing instructions where I put some simple instructions and I tried to keep these instructions as evergreen as possible, meaning I could reuse these instructions again in a different situation. But for right now, this is what we got. The, and the writing instructions are, we're going to plan a story based on the file worldbuildingsheet.txt and 24 chapter novel outline.txt and these instructions. Step one, using the world building sheet as a starting point, come up with three ideas for a novel that could be set in this setting. Step two, from the three ideas you've created, pick the one you think is best. Step three, using the 24 chapter novel outline document, plot a chapter outline for the idea you've selected. Step four, now that you have a full outline, provide 12 slice of life short story ideas that could take place at the same time as the main story. So I'm giving it quite a lot to deal with. We'll see if it's actually able to do it. Um, and by the way, you can do this with anything. I'm just doing it here with a world building idea, but Elizabeth in her original video, which again, go check that out below, uh, she, did it with a sample police report to be used in like a mystery novel. And that could be a really good idea as well. She was giving it all kinds of prompts for what a what you could do with a sample police report to help you plot a, a uh, novel. And so 
here's what we got. And then what we can do is we can take all three of these ideas, let me just X out of them here, all three of these documents, put them in one file, and then we can just compress these files. And I'll just say AI writing into a zip file. And now we're gonna, let's open up a new chat here. Uh, make sure code interpreter is enabled there and then open up the file and now we can select the zipped up file here that has all three of them in it and i can just say unzip this file and proceed with the instructions found therein and now we'll see what happens Okay, so it has unzipped the files and then it accurately read the instructions and then it read the world building sheet file. So it's made some progress and then it stopped, uh, but it did end with now that we have a good understanding of the setting, let's move on to the first steps coming up with three novel ideas, which is based on my uh, instructions here. And I actually had, to, this was the second time uh, that I sent it through. The first time it actually got things wrong it started making up things about the world building sheet instead of reading it. But uh, all I asked it to do is just to regenerate the response and what it gave me was definitely better uh, the second time. So not perfect, but definitely still getting there. So I'm just gonna ask it to continue and hopefully it continues uh, with my instructions. All right, it has moved on to the next step where it gave me three different ideas and now it says it's ready for the next step, which uh, well, it says, let's choose the one that seems the most interesting and promising for further development. In my opinion, the Kepler 62F conundrum presents a particularly compelling story as it opens up the plethora of narrative directions, especially around first contact, exploration, and survival. What do you think? And honestly, it probably just picked that at random. Um, but uh, if we look at the one it's referring to, it says the novel begins as the starbound finally arrives at its destination Kepler 62F. However, the supposedly habitable exoplanet shows signs of already having advanced life. This discovery triggers a series of ethical, philosophical, and survival questions about, among the residents. The story follows the crew as they navigate this unanticipated complication with the fate of the entire ship in their hands. All right, that's okay. I say, I agree, continue. All right, so we moved on to the next section, which is to open the file about the 24 chapter novel outline. And it gave me a pretty decent summary of what that file is about. So now I can just ask it to continue again. All right, and it has already gone ahead and given us the 24 chapter outline, which obviously if you were doing this, you know, with serious intent to write and publish this, you'd want to be given this a little bit more of a closer look. But it's still pretty cool that it's able to do all of this just from the one thing. And then all I have to do is just prompt it to continue, uh, which I will do again now. All right, and now it is fulfilled the final um, step that I gave it, which was to write these uh, potential short story ideas for slice of life episodes surrounding the main story idea. And we, it is done in exactly as instructed. The only hiccup is that when I first did the prompt, it didn't do it right the first time, and then I had to ask it to redo it. But ever since then, it's all, the only thing I've had to do was just ask it to continue, and it has done very well. So this is actually really cool that it can do this sort of thing. And this is a good way if you have documents that you want to rec uh, reference multiple times, like world-building doc documents, like specific outlines perhaps, or character sheets, or you know, police reports, or whatever it is that you want to use, historical research information, that kind of thing. All of that can be packaged inside a document, which you can then in, input into ChatGPT and use. What I don't know yet is what is the word limit for that? I assume that by, um, that by reading all of these things, it's using up some of its word capacity. But also, it doesn't necessarily, for instance, it didn't access the 24 chapter outline until much later when it was actually needed. So you don't necessarily need to input everything all at once and it won't because it won't necessarily read it all at once. 
Uh, it'll read it when necessary if your instructions are good. And so really cool thing. It is also worth noting that Claude, if we go to Claude right now, has a very similar feature where you can attach files to Claude and then start your chat with that. And Claude, we know, has a context window of 100,000 tokens, which is insanely large. Um, and so really, there isn't much of a difference between the use of code interpreter for documents and the way that writers would use them and the use of Claude for the same things. Now, code interpreter can do a lot of other things unrelated to writing and the kind of things that we cover on this channel uh, that Claude cannot do. But it is really cool that this feature is becoming kind of a staple, a normal thing in all of these chatbots. And so really cool to see. I can't wait to see where this technology continues to go because it just keeps getting better and better. And I'll see you in the next video.